everybody going to have a snack here? Yeah. yeah. Seems to be the case. All right, then go for it, Andy. Okay. So, Lincoln, why don't you just tell us uh, where we are and what's the significance of this place? Okay, we are on the southern end of the Biosphere Reserve, the Monarch Butterfly Biosphere Reserve, and we're on the mountain called Cerro Pelon. And the particular part of this mountain we're on is, is truly God's country. Um, it's called the Llanos of the Three Governors. It's a great big open field that's flat in the middle of the forest and it probably had a volcanic origin. Um, and the monarch butterflies have been overwintering in the forest right along here for several years. And in this general area going back to about 1978 or 79, when the overwintering colonies were first discovered. In fact, the first colony discovered was on this mountain on January 2nd, 1975. And uh, one of the things that's really interesting is if it were a little bit warmer, we'd see many more butterflies streaming out in this direction to get, probably we think they're going to drink water. And then when the cloud comes over, they all start racing back. And sometimes you'll see two rivers of butterflies, one going back, one going out, and one coming back. And nobody has ever taken the time to study what's going on. Uh, how far are they going? Where are they going? We presume they're going out for water. Uh, where do they get it? Because if they go into the shade, it gets so cold they lose their flight threshold. So they've got to find sunny spots to drink water. Uh, and they've got to find the water. And so nobody's ever done that here. So it's a really interesting, this is one of the most beautiful parts of the entire biosphere reserve. And it's the most pristine, it's the most beautiful left. Um, and one of our great dreams is to have a really high quality international field station right somewhere on this site. There's plenty of water. Uh, you could even land a helicopter in here if you had to. So, you, so, so you've been doing this for how many years? Since 1977. This is my 30th year. Wow. What's your most memorable experience? My most memorable experience? There have been so many, it's, it's hard to say. And, and the thing of it is, I've come down here probably maybe 80 times in those, over that period. And every time we come down here, we see some different behavior or some different ecology of the monarch. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm totally motivated to keep coming back year after year after year. What's your most, uh, what's the project that you're most proud of? project that I'm most proud of, probably the one that Linda and I did together uh, on, on the bird predation. Because we put together ecological chemistry, uh, fingerprinting of the cardinalides in the butterflies, we watched the behavior of two species of birds and we found, we discovered that they eat poisonous butterflies in two different ways to avoid being poisoned. Uh, and then we could relate that to the which species of milkweeds that the, the, uh, that the birds were eating. They are more likely to eat those monarchs that have fed on less poisonous milkweed plants. And while they will pick a butterfly out of a cluster and maybe damage it, if it's toxic, they'll throw it away and not eat it. And the Oriole will split open the abdomen and taste it and then drop it if it's not good. And if it's good, they'll sit up there in the trees for about five minutes pulling out all the goodies from inside the abdomen. And so it's really fun to watch the birds uh, hit the clusters. They come in early in the morning and late afternoon in, in flocks. And uh, when they get into the colony, if it's a little bit warm, the butterfly clusters just explode when the, when the birds hit them. And so the bird behavior related to the ecology of the monarch, I think, was probably our most significant biological finding. I think you're right. What do you think um, is the most important part of the, the monarch's life cycle, and what's, what's the area of research that we need to know the most of, about it right now? Well, I mean, I think the most pressing issue is conservation biology. Uh, we really don't know why monarchs always come back to the same place every year, or very close to the same places, whether they're marking them. Uh, and uh, over the last three years, Dan Slayback and Ivan Limon, who's our student, 
and others of us flew over this area extensively in a small plane and just based on the uh, microclimate studies that we've done and the relationship of where the colonies form usually on the west facing slopes or the southwest facing slopes at a certain altitude around 3100 meters we expected there would be many habitats where monarchs overwinter and in three years of aerial flying covering maybe 62 percent of the potential area in the whole reserve we didn't find a single colony area outside of those which have been historically known dating back to the 1980s. And so discovering why it is they're always coming back to the same places is really important. And obviously, if they're always coming back to the same places, then that makes an even higher priority to protect the areas where we know they're coming back to. So let me take you over around the side of this mountain and okay. show you where they've just horse logged it over the last 15 years. <laughs> very, very close to this habitat. All right. Well, thanks. Okay, off we go. All right.